For there to be a rubber match means the first two fights weren't convincing enough to deem the better main. One can say that no one knows you better than someone who has graced the ring with you for over 24 rounds. For they have battled to expose each other's flaws as well as fought to survive against each other's greatest strengths. Juan Francisco Estrada met Roman Gonzalez in a rubber match for their trilogy of fights. This rubber match comes after Estrada won a controversial split decision the last time both men graced the ring. The fight allowed Estrada to retain the WBC and the ring titles and added the WBA super title as well. Both boxers are offensive juggernauts in terms of output but very methodical in their approach of how they lay out the punches. The punches aren't thrown with prayer that one may slip through but instead they utilize technical skills such as rhythm, speed, and angles to inflict damage. There is no fear as both men are no strangers to trading in a pocket. This comes from years of proving it to themselves, match after match, fighting for the best, and knowing what they're truly capable of. From previous experiences, Estrada had to take a different approach into this trilogy fight. He decided to use his legs early on and cut angles. Since Chocolatito, a pressure fighter, preferred to take the fight into mid to inside range, Estrada didn't want to be a sitting target and stand directly in front of Chocolatito. A close range combatant volume puncher such as Chocolatito had to set his feet in order to get his combinations going. If you're sticking and moving, you never truly allow the pressure fighter to set the feet and let go of the punches. And that's exactly what Estrada decided to do. The name of the game was to catch Chocolatito engaging since he knew the pressure was inevitable. Catch him at the line, then when Chocolatito enters the pocket and lets his punches go, catch the punches and counter in between. Then pull out and reset in order to start the sequence all over again. And if Estrada pulls and Chocolatito tries to close the gap again, let him run right into the punches. It takes really good footwork to know exactly how to set your feet while moving backwards. If you're unable to set your feet correctly, then that takes away from all the power in your punches, as power develops from the ground up. Being that this was the third fight, Estrada knew both of them didn't have the type of power to finish the fight early. So the trick isn't about landing big hard shots, but instead landing meaningful ones. There's a difference. Hard shots require you to plant your feet and follow through. If you were to do this, you would take away from the speed. As with faster punches, you'd have to pull back from impact in order to let go of the follow-up punches quicker. The point of attack is also very important. You don't want to be predictable and only throw shots as your opponents engage. This is where the jab comes into play with the sticking and moving. Everything is about timing. Chocolatino knows that there's no obstacles to surpass while closing the gap, he will just freely engage. Then it's important to mix up more power shots, because since the jab is considered the weakest punch, it becomes even weaker if it's thrown while moving. If this happens, then your opponent can just walk through your punches then get to work with their own. If you don't give the pressure fighter any resistance, he will just walk you down until your legs are weak, then begin the battering. The thing about fighters who use movement early on is that at some point they'll have to eventually slow down. The pressure fighter's whole objective is to press a heavy pace and test their opponent's conditioning. Since Estrada used good movement early on, it was vital for Chocolatito to cut off the ring. Cutting off the ring doesn't mean you've got your opponent's cornered. It means that for the second or so, you have a center target to open up on. The attack to the body was also essential. By going to the body, you're beating away at the gas tank that on top of the fact that Estrada was already using plenty of movement. Chocolatito used his combinations like a true technician. Not every punch was thrown with full power. By doing this, it's too easy for an elite fighter to time. Sometimes, he'll open with a fast jab and cross just to load up a heavy lead hook. Others, he even makes it up by throwing a heavy jab and cross and then throw a fast hook in order to load a heavy right hook. When Estrada slowed down a bit, Chocolatito made sure to give him no breathing room. He worked too hard to slow him down just enough for this moment. Even if Estrada's guard is up, he's banging away at it. Sometimes, it's important to create your own openings. 
even if the door is closed. Sometimes you just gotta kick it in. He's even comfortable against the ropes, which is where he shouldn't be, but that's how you know he's in control of this fight. 20 more. Yeah, jab, jabs are rarely on the menu between these two, right, Chris? Yeah, they're power punches. Look at the 705 punches that were landed. So you can see how comfortable Mario Strong. The fight was back and forth for 12 rounds. Both men had truly fought their hearts out, with Chocolatino being aggressor while Strada, the boxer counterpuncher. It's refreshing to get a solid fight this late into the year, where the actual number one contender is facing off against the champion. Both guys fought a great fight, as I expected nothing less. Usually when an aging fighter such as Chocolatino takes this type of fight later on in his career, the output is usually unmatched as the younger fighter has the fresher lungs. This fight wasn't the case, as Chocolatito truly showed why he would go down as one of the greatest smaller guys of all time. The issue with boxing is that judging is subjective. There's no one specific criteria that all judges must follow. Depending on the night, some judges may prefer the aggressive fighter, as they see that he's pressing the pace and making a fight happen. Typically, the fighter who throws more tends to leave themselves more open, as every time you throw a punch, you're leaving an opening. Or is it that you favor the guy on the back foot, as most of the time, they're the one laying in the cleaner punches. And it's also harder in my opinion, to fight off your back foot and lay meaningful shots. This is something that boxing just hasn't hashed out yet. This night, the judge scored it in favor of Estrada, as it was a majority decision with one judge having a draw while the other two favored Estrada. Chocolatito to me, has a lot left in the tank and still has something left to give to the sport. But then again, he doesn't owe us or boxing anything, as he's already proven himself to once be the number one pound for pound fighter, as well as a four division world champion. He's also given over 17 years of his life to the sport, as he turned pro at 18. So if he decides to retire, all the best wishes to him, as he truly deserves it. As for Estrada, he's proven why he's considered the best in the division. There's plenty of great matchups left in the weight class, as Ayoka reigns from across seas, but also because there's a new kid in town, and his name's Bam Rodriguez.